This is David Dubal. Every once in a while, if you are lucky, a person enters your life who not only encourages you, but knows exactly how to direct your abilities in a truly beneficial way. This happened to me when I studied piano with Wim Stasius Muller at Ohio State University, where he helped a very confused person, namely me, on the path to being a musician. Wim Muller has since those days had a varied career, not only in music, but in the world of diplomacy, where he leads an exciting life. But still he finds time to play recitals and even concertos with the orchestra he once conducted in his native Curaçao. He and his brilliant wife Sally are in the United States to see their first grandson and to finalize some details concerning his recording of Antillean dances of his own composition on the Spectrum label. Wim, it's so good to talk to you again. Thank you, David. How have you been? And tell me a little bit of your adventures lately. Well, essentially, I think I should say something about music as in the ad adventures, but the first thing in the, that comes to mind is the, uh, the experience of having become a grandparent. It is an you amazing know. one, isn't yes. it? And you're so young. Well, you started thank early. You. I, really? Well, I'm I'm 54 already, so I'd it's say, uh, it's it's quite a compliment. <laughs> well, you <laughs> look fantastic. You know, you hardly have changed since the days of Ohio State University, when yeah. I must tell you, as I in my in introduction intimated, it was a great experience knowing you. You were of just a great impact, and you know, everyone that studied piano at that school wanted to study with you. I don't know if you know that. Uh, no, I did not really realize it, and uh, but I do know that uh, you were at that time. You know, I recognized. I'm glad I was able to recognize the talent when when I did. You know, and uh, in fact, I did uh, make. It, it was not really a sacrifice, but I. It went a little bit against the grain to uh, to to encourage you to leave. Ohio State. I and, understand and, and I remember know, that, sure. Yeah. But I thought it was really, and I, I'm, I think I've been vindicated in that, that well, every most amply. <laughs> that every decision I've ever, ever made really has, has yeah. worked out well. And I must say that's the same for you because uh, you probably intended your whole career to be uh, teaching at a university performing, and yet it has been much more extensive. And one of the things that it is uh, recently uh, occupied yourself with is the composer in yes. you. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we're talking today. Very recently you've recorded for Spectrum 24 of your Antillian dances. Now, you were born in Curaçao and we really don't know, Wim, what Antillian means. <laughs> You know, David, I had been thinking that I might not use the term Antillian for these pieces as a collective name because, indeed, not many people will know, I think, what it means. But Antillian dances is what they are. And what are the Antilles? We have the, the large Antilles and the small Antilles in the Caribbean. But the only islands that are actually called Antillian collectively are the six, one, six islands that still belong to... Uh, to the Dutch Kingdom, mm -hmm. the Netherlands, and they were united under the Dutch flag oh about three more than three hundred years ago. There still are parts of part of the kingdom. They consist of six islands, three fairly larger ones that lie off the coast of Venezuela: Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. Mm -hmm. All three rather well known for their beaches and the tourism. You know that. Uh, uh, Curaçao, which is the capital uh, of the of the Antilles, uh, also known for the liqueur, mm -hmm. and uh, then there are three smaller ones that are closer to the uh, in the Leeward Island chain, further up closer to Puerto Rico. These islands have a particular type of music. Um, I would say that you could you you could collectively say that we are talking about Caribbean music. Um, and the Caribbean music, which derives from African sources, from Western European sources, 
uh, essentially of the Western European, uh, the the Spanish mm-hmm. music, Spanish rhythms. That music uh, is, is is fascinating in its rhythm, and is it's, you can hear it through all the islands. But each one of the islands will have a slightly different version of the same rhythm, or maybe the melodic uh, idiom will be slightly different. Um, if you take, for instance, and I'll go to the to the uh, to the north coast of South America. If you take the Venezuelan waltz and the Venezuelan joropa, the Venezuelan waltz is a bit faster than the waltz you will find in Curaçao. The joropa has a rather strong first beat, every beat, hmm. and it's danced uh, in the Spanish manner, stamping with stamping feet. In Colombia, you have a similar waltz called the Pasillo, which has a very placid accompaniment, uh, a a dactylic accompaniment. And the interesting thing about all these waltzes is that your 3-4, basic 3-4 rhythm, uh, always has a a 6-8 implication. In other words, you're, you're able to hear six running eighth notes, either in a, in a duple or in a triple meter. And sometimes you hear uh, the duple and the triple combined, and mm-hmm. you get a rather curious cross rhythm in the center of each beat. How interesting. Wim Muller is my guest, and we're talking about his new recording of 24 Antillian dances, played by himself, and they are his own works. And Wim, what will be the first piece we hear t- today? The first one will be a waltz. It's uh, it is called Piet Mal at eighty. Piet Mal at eighty. Uh, a very dear friend of ours, of my wife and me, who was known for his dancing skill, and at his uh, on his eightieth birthday, I presented him with this waltz, oh, which he danced. How you know. charming! Well, yeah. let's hear this waltz. Okay. I've just heard Pete Mal at 80, an Antillian a waltz by Wim Stasius Muller. Right after this message, we'll be back with more discussion with my guest about his career and these fascinating pieces of music he has composed. My guest today is Wim Muller. Wim is more than a guest. He is also my teacher and friend. And... I have long been fascinated by these pieces. The first time I ever heard one, Wim, was when you gave a gigantic program at Mershon Auditorium in uh, Columbus and as an encore. 
you um, played one of your uh, Antillean dances. When was it that you knew that you were going to be, in a sense, an ethnomusicologist of the Antilles? Did you, were you born with well, this I in your think, blood? Well, yes, it is. I think every uh, Antillian who, who makes music is, 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 a, is a composer of that kind of music, oh, you know, of, the, of our... It's, it's in our blood. In, uh, it's, uh, whether you're from Curaçao or from Aruba or Bonaire, uh, there, I think you would... Uh, you'd, you'd probably would enjoy this story. I mean, my, f my first teacher in Curaçao was uh, self-taught, as most of the musicians in the islands are, or have been. Now, in, in my generation and later, we are finally getting more trained musicians on the islands. But maybe, say, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, this was a very rare thing to have someone actually go out of the islands and study music. But my teacher, who played just about every instrument you could imagine, strings, woodwinds, brass, and piano, and organ, and taught all of them, had taught himself to play all of them. And he also mm. taught himself to compose. Mm. And uh, some of his waltzes and tumbas and dances have also been published. And in, in, it's, it's the funniest thing, really, is that he had something of a... Uh, he and his father as well, before him, had something of a music... Uh, I would say a, a, a music workshop. Someone who would walk in, who had a, a party coming up, would like to have a new piece for that party. And he said, okay, what kind of dance would you like? You'd like a mazurka, would you like a waltz? He said, okay, I'd like a tumba. This is a two-part or a three-part. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be maybe five kilders for a two-part and ten for a three-part. Uh, if there were words, it would be a little bit more difficult. And something like that would be turned out in about half an hour. How wonderful. And the funny thing really is, is that I, and you know that, uh, I have for a long, long time considered what I have written, and I've written oh, many of these, as doodles. Mm -hmm. And it's, in fact, it is true that only after, in fact, after I, 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 uh, I changed my career somewhat into and going into government, that I was doing less playing in public, and that I actually turned into paying more attention to, to what I was writing and trying to, to use the, uh, the, the rhythms. And I tried to change the style also somewhat, but that's, that has proved to be rather difficult because the style which developed in the 19th century is, is so much an integral part of, of what makes it recognizable that you cannot, you cannot toy with it all that much. Mm -hmm. Without I, its losing its identity. I understand. We're yes, going yes. to hear another one right now, Wim. Um, tell me about the next piece. Mm, the next piece, piece is something of a hybrid. Uh, it it is a, it has something of a tumba in it, and a bit of a calypso. Mm -hmm. uh, I would call it a tumba calypso, and the calypso, of course, you know, is a more well-known dance form, uh, mainly from the East Caribbean islands. The tumba is very typically Netherlands Antillian, mm -hmm, yes. and this is a, this is something of a combination of it. Maybe you could you could also find a a, a rhythm that it's reminiscent of the Brazilian machiche in mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. What's the title? Uh, this one I only called Tumba Calypso in F. Tumba Calypso in F, by Wim Muller. <laughs> Thank you. 
You have just heard two Antillian dances. We went on past the Calypso piece. And what was the second one? The second one was again a waltz. Mm. And uh, the title? This, the title was Luna y Solo, Moon and Sun. Well, the bass in that, that yeah. just that one moment of yeah. glory. You just yeah. know how to play your own music so perfectly, Wim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I know you gave me um, a copy of Pete Mal, and I'm having such fun playing it myself. We're going to be back with more discussion of your Antillian dances, which are now on Spectrum SR-184, by the way, right after this message. My guest, Wim Stasius Muller, and we are talking about his Antillian dances, 24 in number, which he has just recorded for the Spectrum label, SR-184, and there's just not a more charming literature available. And, Wim, we have talked about some of the genesis of these dances, but let's talk a little bit about you yourself growing up on an island. That's so interesting. Are you... Now, you are part of the Dutch world and yet here you are also part of the Caribbean. It's an interesting dissonance, isn't it? It's, yes, it's, it, it, it's the character of the, of the Dutch islands in the Caribbean. We are, uh, in fact, totally ambivalent people. We are both uh, somewhat European in our ways, and we are Latins. And it's, uh, it's, it's our proximity to, uh, to Venezuela, so many of the, the Caribbean islands have taken on characteristics of the colonial nations, you know. You mm -hmm. have the, the French have colonized, and the, the Spanish, of course, have in, in the earliest stages, but, and the English. The Dutch have maybe put less of a stamp on the people in their colonies than some of the other colonizing nations. Uh, they have not, uh, for instance, really imposed their language the Dutch language, to the extent that it's, it has completely become the language used in, on these islands. Uh, we have a language which well, What's is the name of it? Papiamento. Papiamento? Papiamento. Which Say is, something to me in that language. papiamento. papiamento. Wim, it's a beautiful language. What is it a combination well, of? Well, you see, of course, it's, uh, it has uh, an African uh, base, basis, very much the syntax. The syntax of Papiamento is somewhat similar to Kiswahili. And, uh, but the sound of the language is, is very much Latin. And there, people have uh, long disputed whether the, the origins were Spanish or Portuguese or both. But... In fact, you can recognize both in in the language, huh. and there are some words in Papiamento that have been borrowed from a variety of other languages. Some from from Dutch, mm -hmm. uh, many from English, of course. But of course, that's uh, every language has been doing that, especially of late. But we also have some words from Hebrew huh. that are so. It's uh, it's indeed it's it's a lingua franca. And it's not a dialect, but it's a, it's a language on its own. And now we have uh, a, uh, a spelling has been agreed upon. And it is, in fact, now taught in school in the first few grades uh, to, to ease the transition from the language that is spoken at home to the official language, which is still Dutch. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Dutch language is necessary as an, as an introduction to, to, to the cultural needs for people who are going to study anywhere in the world. I mean, they'd have to learn uh, different languages uh, which have a literature, and uh, especially nowadays a technical literature. So Papiamento is, is, is something which is native to all of us, but it is a language with a very limited scope of use, of course. Very interesting, and you sound to me as the ideal ambassador from Curaçao. <laughs> um, now, you... You're growing up there, and it's, it's a musical childhood, but there must have been a time that you said, I need to get out into the bigger world to find out uh, what kind of musician I really am and for further studies. You may well, at the age of 14 or 15, possibly have thought yourself the greatest pianist ever produced by Curaçao, right? 
but you didn't know all of the people that would be in New York later. <laughs> no, right. I, I, I remember, uh, fortunately not for a long time, but in the in the first year that I studied uh, with my dear friend and teacher Joseph Rafe at Juilliard, the worst thing he could say to me when I did something wrong was, you know, Willem, one day you're going to be the best piano teacher they ever had in Curaçao. Ah, uh, you know. Well, <laughs> well Rafe, Rafe is a wonderful teacher. He is a marvelous and teacher. Yes. Certainly, right now he thinks he thinks of you as as a very great success in the catalog of the many great students he's had. Believe me. He has he has said many very nice things to me afterwards. Yes. Yeah. He did. Well, he used a certain technique. Probably you were undisciplined when you came to him, right? When I came to him, I was really surprised that he took me mm -hmm. because uh, I was doing just about everything you could imagine I was doing wrong because I had indeed studied uh, with our my, my old friend, uh, Mr. Pallum, till I was about 14. And then uh, I drifted for the next five years, and not until I was 19 did I get to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever bad habits I could have acquired, I did acquire them, you know, and uh, not paying attention to the score, not uh, not always thinking that you knew it better than the composer, I mean, sure. this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And and in fact, the facility was there, and possibly the right impulses were there, but it took a well, of course, it's a bit of a compliment to myself, but I'm giving it. Took a good teacher, a great teacher, to see it, to right. see through all the uh, mm -hmm. the rust or the whatever it was, the wrong veneer, and he did. And yes, he, well, uh, he saw something deep yes. in you. Um, we're going to come back to your Antillean dances, and speaking of uh, discipline, you certainly became very disciplined in your own work because I note that in your compositions you're extremely fastidious as to the way you want them to uh, sound, as to the markings, to the pedalings, to the uh, metronome markings even. Mm -hmm. So uh, you became a very musicianly man very quickly, obviously, after your, uh, your Juilliard experience. It's unavoidable, I think, really, when, uh -huh. you, when you have come. The, 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 the enormous uh, experience of, of coming from a small island and, and be plunged right into what you could say, well, I, practically the mecca of the, of the music world. Yes. In, uh, this, was, I mean, this was the middle 50s, you know. Uh, well, no, the middle 50s is when I, when I finished Julia, but it yes. was in the early 50s that I, that I came here. And it was... Uh, it was a time with, with an awful lot of talent all around me at, at Juilliard. Oh, you know, sure. you got terribly discouraged, you know. If you John Browning was there and John Clyburn. Brown and John and, and Clyburn and George Katz. And uh, really, really, we had a, an, an, it, it, was, it was awesome, in fact. Thriving. You know, really, terrific. Now, we have heard three Antillian dances. Let's hear a fourth and a fifth. Let's hear two more in okay. a row. Okay. The, the fourth one, I know, I, I'm not so sure what the, the sequence is. The fourth one, I think, will be a mazurka. It's the only mazurka on the, uh, on, that will be on the record. I should say that I included a mazurka because it belongs to be, make it representative, mm -hmm. because it belongs in the group of dances that have been, that have become, through the 19th century, become popular yes. in the islands and were composed. But the mazurka has not actually acquired a typically Antillian stamp. Mm -hmm. It has remained a European mazurka. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are little shades of Chopin in every mazurka. We well, should hope so. Yes, <laughs> little shades. We hope. <laughs> and then the next one? The next one, I'm not so sure, but uh, let's hear it and then uh, okay. I'll comment on it afterwards. Two more Antillian dances from Wim Muller's new recording on the Spectrum label. Thank you. 
have just heard two more of Wim Muller's Antillian dances. Which ones were those? Well, the first, the first one was the, the Mazurka. Mazurka. The second one is, again, like the, the second one we played uh, at the beginning of the interview, a, a, a tumba calypso, but very strongly this one with a very strong machiche quality, Brazilian. It's very much, it, it has uh, the Brazilian vein in it. I remember reading a book you showed me that uh, was on the island's history, and you wrote, you wrote the chapters, the articles on the various dances. Am I not right? That's the uh, Encyclopedia of the Netherlands and Yes. 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 I wrote the the musical uh, contributions to that. Well, yes. nobody should have done it but you. Uh, you truly have every single aspect of this in your being. Um, how how alive is it today? this uh, tradition as compared with 50 years ago? Are surprisingly, there... surprisingly, I'd say very much alive. Really? Yes. There are not not all the pieces. Now, for instance, your your mazurkas, uh, which, I, as I mentioned, have not really been right. been changed into typically Antillian pieces all that much. All or the polkas, mm -hmm. which uh, mm -hmm. I, there's also one polka on the... Uh, on in the in they're on the record. Yes, uh, as you said in yes. your notes, they could yeah. have been written in Vienna. They could have yes. Yeah. Those are in fact really not not danced all that much anymore. Uh -huh. The other ones have the, definitely the walls, the danza, and the tumba have survived and are still being composed. And it, they are written as dance music. Of uh -huh. course, mine are somewhat. Well, I wouldn't really say stylized, but I play them more as salon pieces, as pieces to be listened to. Yes. And in fact, they have been. They, they, they are. There is a certain, uh, I'd say, well, rubatus uh, that 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 creeps into every one of them, which makes it rather difficult if anybody should wish to dance on them. Yes. And it's. Uh, it's it's it's. I have been chided for it in Curacao. You know, they say, "Well, we cannot dance to what you what you what you play." You know, I said, "Well, I have to make quite an effort to be metrical about it." You know, mm. and play for the for for the pieces. But they are they are not really written to be danced. Well, Schumann yes. said of Chopin's waltzes, they should only be danced by at least countesses. So. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Well, Pete Mal did dance his walls. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. We're going to hear two more, and we're going to be surprised Let's as we listen see. to them. And we'll uh, the the next one, I believe, will be a waltz called Te Aworo, which means as much as uh, uh, so long, uh, sayonara. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a waltz which I wrote as the theme song for a for the music to a movie uh, mm -hmm. which was made of the Netherlands Antilles, a documentary. And uh, very often when tourists arrive on the islands, especially in Aruba, uh, there is a, a trio of guitarists who will uh, greet them. And I've been very pleased and honored to know that that waltz there has been selected to uh, as, a, as one of the favorites that they greet tourists with. And so it's your music they hear when they come off of the... They, they will hear well, it, and they will, they will hear it with words saying Bombini when they come, which is welcome, and Teoro when they leave. I'll bet you never got a penny of royalties from that. Not though. really, no, <laughs> no, that's all. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Is that, and then that, uh, following... Uh, the next one, I'm not so sure which one follows. We'll see. We'll hear yes, them. They're yes. all so delightful, yeah. all of these. Let's hear two more uh, of the Antillian dances by Wim Muller.
You have just heard the brilliant piano playing of Wim Muller. Now, these are two more of your Antillian dances. What were the names? Now, the first one was the, the waltz, Teoro, and the one we just heard was a tumba. That's the first true tumba. We have heard tumba calypsos. That's the first tumba called Kalin, dedicated and called after dedicated to and called after a, um, a dear friend of ours mm -hmm. in um, Aruba mm -hmm. who who loves to dance the tumba and uh, so I wrote this piece for her. Oh that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, the tumba uh, you will have noticed this this very peculiar rhythm which is one of the guises in which the, uh, the so-called cinquillo appears throughout the Caribbean. You find the cinquillo very often uh, you find it, of course, in the habanera. You know, you have the the, the 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 broken rhythm of the of the habanera, and then you have the the, the three two. In fact, it's a, you could consider it a um, a slight distortion of a triplet followed by two eight notes. But you can write it, in fact, in five, mm -hmm. and it is played in five. Mm -hmm. It's not entirely the five, but you have to. It, it all these rhythms are body rhythms. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a body response to the rhythm or or it's no sure. good, you know. Do you remember the old uh, statement that you had to be born in Poland to play the mazurka? Do you have to be born in Curaçao to play well the tumba? You may not have to be born there, but you most certainly must have danced it there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You had to at and least been uh, in... It's a, it's, it's, it has been rather difficult for people not Antillian to see this music, but it, with the waltz, but I think even more with the tumba, I mm -hmm. think, to uh, to recognize what to do really and to to feel it because the, uh, the rhythm is is, is uh, it's, it has to be a bit in your blood. Yes, yeah. it's so wonderful that they chide you for for playing them more as as uh, uh, piano pieces. Yes, because they really. When they hear these rhythms, they just really want to dance, don't they? They do want to dance yeah. it, and then they get up and they start dancing, and then all of a sudden I change the tempo a bit, you know. And then <laughs> well, we're learning a great deal about an island which uh, we know very little of, and um, they seem to be not only a musical people, the people of Curaçao, they seem to be a, a rather happy people. Is, is, is this too much of a generalization? I think not. Uh-huh. No, no. No. Uh, there's much to be happy about in uh, in these islands, in Curaçao, in Aruba, Bonaire. They're they're lovely. They're the climate is terrific. Mm. It's dry. It's uh, there are beautiful beaches. Life is good. Life is good. Yes, it may not always be. It's 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 let's let's say it's it's rich in the bounties of of nature, mm -hmm. and in the in the manner in which people live with each other on mm -hmm. these islands. It's very. Yes, it, 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 I think you could call them happy islands. Happy yes. islands. Yes. Now, you have two children. Of course, in the beginning we said that you were uh, here visiting your granddaughter for the first time. Did your son and daughter grow up in, the, uh, in Curaçao? They have, well, both spent a number of years there. But, uh, well, they have been out of Curaçao uh, again now for the last 10 years mm -hmm. ten or more years. My son who studied in the United States and my daughter who studied in Europe. She's a good the pianist, States. Annette. She's a, she's a very good pianist, mm -hmm. yes. She's, uh, she's married now and uh, not pursuing a career in piano, but uh, at least she, she has played enough, she has learned enough to to be able to enjoy her own playing and have other people enjoy what she does. Does she uh, play any of your Antillian dances? She plays the waltzes. Uh -huh. she, has a tr she has trouble with the tumba. <laughs> uh, yes. She's not there enough to dance it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. What's the next work we're going to hear, Wim? Ah. I, I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter because no. we are going to hear it and then we'll know. Okay. So let's hear one of the 24 Antillian dances which Wim Stasius Muller has recorded for S Spectrum. It's SR-184, I believe. And it's an album that has such charm and may I say Wim the playing is as stylish as your playing always is thank you
You have just heard a gorgeous Antillian dance. Which form is this? Uh, that's, is this? that's the danza. Danza. Yeah. Speak to me of the danza. The danza is of all the Caribbean dances, and I would uh, advisedly say Caribbean because the danza does not occur only in Curaçao, Aruba, or um, the Dutch Leeward Islands. It's very much, for instance, uh, a dance in Puerto Rico. In fact, I would say it's the national dance in Puerto Rico. Really? National anthem has been made a danza. Hmm. Uh, it harks back very clearly to the 19th century society in which these dances were born. Uh, the first eight bars of a danza, sometimes repeated uh, to 16, are reminiscent of the first of the dances in the quadrille or in the contradance. In, in the, you have the Spanish contradanza or the French contradanza or quadrille, which were group dances and uh, were very much in vogue in the 19th century in the salons. And the, the danza, as we know it now, has retained that first movement and is also danced as a group dance. And it's the, in Curaçao we call the, uh, that, that prelude, that opening, a chan, the chain. In Puerto Rico, the uh, chain is called paseo, or uh, promenade. At the end of the, of the chan, we get... A, um, a, a, the music stops, usually on a dominant seventh chord. I have, in some of my dances, surprised people by st uh, by starting in a, in, a, in a minor mode and then uh, moving to a major, or starting in a major mode, moving to a minor, mm -hmm. and then. But there is a moment where the music stops, allowing for the partners to to uh, to bow to each other, and then it continues as a as a dance in pairs, and it's. Uh, the rhythm, again, is very much the, the cinquillo-type rhythm, but a little bit smoother, a little uh, more, uh, st shall I say, g graceful than the tumba. Mm -hmm. Very often, dancers will have a third part, which is a bit faster again. Mm -hmm. uh, so mine do not. So, Wim, what, what are the majority of your Antillian dances on this album of yours? Uh, mostly waltzes first, and then mostly tumbas? Mostly waltzes. Mostly then, waltzes, and uh, that's right. Tumbas uh, afterward? I have about ten waltzes on it, uh, I think six tumbas, and then only one uh, mazurka, one polka, and then some combinations, tumba, two dances. Two dances. Uh, yes. Let's the, hear two more. The next one, I believe, will be a, a waltz again. Mm -hmm. It's one which I, uh, I, I'd i like to call a European one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you will hear why. It's, I wrote it, of course I wrote it in Europe, and many of the, the ones I have recently written, I have, have written in Europe. But this one does particularly have a, uh, a more European flavor, I think. The rhythm is there, but the, I don't mm -hmm. know. See if you agree with me. Okay, we're going to hear another of the Antillian dances by Wim Muller.
You have just heard a waltz and a calypso. And a tumba. A tumba by Wim Stasius Muller. Uh, after this message, we're going to hear one more before we conclude. And we have listened to um, quite a few of your Antillian dances on a spectrum recording. This is David Dubal, and I am back with my guest, Wim Muller. Uh, you know, Wim, these pieces have been described as um, a unique kind of blending of folklore and salon music, and, it, and they have a certain charm and sophistication. And I think that your playing has that same charm and sophistication. I have always admired your piano playing. Do you have a chance to still work on the standard literature? Fortunately, yes. Good. Yes, I have. Uh, I have been able to to stay well, stay mostly in practice, and I'm very lucky. A very good friend of mine conducts an orchestra in Curaçao. As a matter of fact, I used to conduct that orchestra before we uh, moved to Europe, mm -hmm. and he has taken it over and has done wonders with it because he has uh, a class of of, uh, of string students who play in the orchestra and it's most amazing to find little kids and older people sitting side by side and playing in that, that it's it's an amateur orchestra but for performances he um, he calls on uh, professionals from Venezuela and Puerto Rico to come and uh, and help out yes and you're playing the Tchaikovsky with I'm him I'm playing the Tchaikovsky with him this year oh, and uh, I did the Chopin, uh, Chopin E minor with him last year the Rachmaninoff that's uh, the year before. Yes, uh -huh. I try to get back about once or once a year, once every two years, and uh, and we we always do a concerto. And I'll be I'll be playing with him and his. This is Eric Horsira and his daughter, who's a fine cellist. We'll also be doing a um, chamber music program of Beethoven. You know, uh, violin sonata, piano sonata, and all the trio. Wim, we have really learned a great deal about the uh, Curacao from you as well as the dance forms of that island. And we're going to conclude from your new album on Spectrum, SR-184, with one last piece. Which one is it? Do you it is also a tumba. It's, I call it the last tumba, because it's also the last one on the recording. It's unusual, it's very short. It's unusual as a tumba, because the tumba usually is a very uh, happy, gay, and a lively piece. And this is a somewhat sad and introspective ah. tumba. Let's hear the last tumba by Wim Stasius Muller. That was The Last Tumba by Wim Stasius Muller, my guest today. And we've been listening to some of his Antillian dances. 24 have been recorded by him on the Spectrum label. I wish you the best of luck with this album. It has just been the wonderful for me to be able to see you again and to talk to you, Wim. Well, thank you very much, David. It's been my privilege. Be well. This is thank David Dubal. Thank you.
for listening.